Hello guys and welcome to my July empties. What a wonderful So I've got a ton of stuff to share with you guys this month. It was kind of a light month for candles, but a good month for body care. And then I also finished off five books. I have three here and then two audiobooks that I will share my reviews of as well. So let's just go ahead and get started. So you'll notice that I am sitting down. I actually bought a vanity last month and it's one of my favorite things. I think I'm going to do a favorites video soon because I've gotten a few new things since I've been in this new house. And I really love them. So I'm loving this vanity. I like the lighting. I don't have to have my ring light, which you can see is behind me. I don't have to use it all the time. And I can sit down and do these videos, which is nice because they're like 15 minutes. So anyways, let's get started with candles since I only finished one this month, which is kind of sad, but that's okay. I finished off Mahogany Coconut and I love this one. It was in my Project Wax where I'm trying to finish up candles. And it was just like a really awesome scent burned all the way down to the bottom super strong thrower this is creamy coconut mahogany woods and english lavender just a wonderful scent this is always like a summer staple for me so i really loved this one and i guess we could get started with body care because i have some good empties so the first one is beach nights in the shower gel i love this scent i'm so sad this was my last shower gel i think i only have it left in the fine fragrance mist this one is so yummy it's toasted marshmallow, sea salt breeze, s'mores accord, beach driftwood, creamy vanilla. It's like vanilla, marshmallow, breezy. It's so good. I might look on Mercari and see if I can't pick up a backup of the shower gel and the lotion, but it's so good. It's so good. I hope they bring it back next year, but I loved this one. Another empty. I finished off my Velvet Coffee Tree Hut Body Scrub. I know I've been telling you guys that I really kind of hated this. <laughs> It was honestly, I don't even want to open it. It was honestly too strong. It smelled like grinding espresso beans, but like not in a good way. Um, it was way too strong. I wish this would have been more like a vanilla coffee than just like espresso beans. It was just too much, um, but I used it up. I mean, I like Tree Hut's formula. I just did not like this scent. Sorry if you can hear Ryan cooking in the kitchen downstairs, <laughs> but anyways. Okay, I also finished off another body scrub this is from dionis and it's the goat's milk vanilla bean body scrub this one's a foaming formula which i really liked the formula of this it was nice and gentle and it felt really like soft on the skin so i really liked it nothing to write home about though i don't think i would repurchase it i think i like the foaming sugar scrubs from bath and body works more than these so it was still good though but i wouldn't probably purchase it again i do have this little mini bath uh what is this bubble bath yeah, foaming bath from Dr. Teal's, and this is lavender. And I got this in a little like pack for a Christmas gift a while ago. And now that I have a bathtub, I've been actually using all my bath products. So I'm really happy that I'm in a house with a huge bathtub now that I can use. And I love taking baths like every couple of weeks. So this was really nice. Um, I'm not the biggest lavender fan, but I found that I still really like this. So I would probably pick it up again because I know Dr. Teal's is a good fair price for bubble bath and they do have it sometimes at like marshall's and tj maxx on sale so i will definitely be picking up probably another one of that in like a different scent maybe and then i did finish off a lot of hand soaps so i finished off this soft soap lavender and shea uh hand soap and it was nice i honestly just picked this up right when we moved in um because we didn't have any more hand soaps so it was nice though and i think it was like five dollars uh, maybe $4, which I could get a Bath & Body Works soap on sale for the same price. So I'll probably stick to Bath & Body Works because I like their scents better. I also finished off this soft soap, Coconut & Hibiscus. I actually really enjoyed this scent a lot. It was really yummy. So I probably would pick it up again. And I like this formula too. It's like, it's very moisturizing. Also finished off a gel hand soap from Bath & Body Works. This is Ice Cinnamon Rolls. I had a ton of these um, that... I think Ryan's mom picked up a ton of these on like a super sale for like a dollar or something from her Bath and Body Works and she's been gifting them to us and this is a really good scent for the kitchen. So I've been slowly going through them and using them up, but I do actually really like the gel hand soap formula for the kitchen now, um, whereas I used to not before, but I like the foaming for the bathrooms. I also finished this Flamingo foaming shave gel and I already purchased a backup. This is my new favorite shave cream. It's just super simple 
it's not crazy expensive. There's not any scent to it. I just think it does the job and it does it well and it's a good price. So I really like this one. I also finished off this Happy Easter Tutti Fruity Candy Hand Cream from a couple of years ago, actually. I think I got this on like major clearance during SAS. And yeah, I really liked it. It's just like a super simple jelly bean kind of scent, which is still yummy. I did finish off a couple minis. I've been trying to get through some of these like foil packet samples that I have. So I have this Scentsy Body Cream and Coconut Daiquiri. This was so yummy. I really, really liked it. I guess I have a new love for coconut scented things because I've been really loving coconut everything this summer. So really liked this one. I have two skincare foil packets. So I finished off the Kiehl's Ultra Facial Cream. Honestly, I didn't really notice any difference between this and my CeraVe cream. So probably wouldn't pick that up because I know it's very expensive. And then the Tatcha Dewy Skin Cream, which you only had like one use in this. So I'm really sad, but it was actually really, really good. And it definitely left my skin dewy and plump. So that was really good. I probably won't purchase it because Tatcha is very expensive, but still was excited to get to use that. I have another bath product that I didn't even see down here. This is the Village Naturals Aches and Pains Nighttime Relief Mineral Bath Soak. I need to get some just like regular bath salts. I don't have any, I think I have some foot soak bath salts, which do not use for an entire body bath because it'll give you the poops. I don't know what, what it is, but just don't do it, okay? So anyways, I need to pick up some bath salts. Um, I'll probably pick some up from like, I don't know, like Five Below or Marshalls or something. I don't need expensive stuff for like bath salts or bubble baths, but I liked it. It was okay. Didn't really notice any difference in my aches and pains, so. Moving on to skincare, I finished off this Tony Moly Cactus Sheet Mask. I have a pack of these and I've been going through them pretty much every time that I take a bath, so I like it. It's nice, it like feels nice, so. I finished off this Rodile Dragon's Blood Hyaluronic Mask. So this one I got in a Fab Fit Fun a long time ago, and I actually really enjoyed it. I did this about once a week at night as like a leave overnight kind of face mask and it was really nice. So I definitely liked it. I don't even know what this brand is, but I do like doing a hydrating mask every now and then. I also finished off my Mary Kay Time Wise Repair Volume Firm Eye Renewal Cream. I've been starting to use eye cream now that I turned 27. Hey, yeah, I turned 27 last week, you guys. So, um, but yeah, I've been trying to use an eye cream at least at night and I liked this. I liked that it has like this metal tip at the end actually but I don't think I need this much kind of firmingness. Obviously this is meant for like aging skin. So I liked it. I don't know if I would get it again though. And then this is my Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow PHA BHA Pore Tight Toner. This has been my favorite for probably two to three years. I love it so much. It was giving my skin like a beautiful plump glow and keeping it super moisturized, but I think my skin developed a tolerance for it. And so I'm gonna have to go to something else. I did purchase two, I'll show you um, the two that I've been using instead, but I love this. If you've never tried it before, you definitely need to try it. It gave me plump skin. It definitely helped with a, like dryness, any dryness that I had, and I loved it a lot. But yeah, I think my skin just developed a tolerance and it doesn't work for me anymore. So I did actually just purchase two new toners that I've been using instead. So I have one from Causerex, this is the AHA BHA vitamin C toner. And then I have one from Fresh, this is the Rose Deep Hydration Facial Toner. I think this one is really good so far. Um, I haven't noticed a major difference. I've only had these for like a week, but that's just a little update on my skincare. And the last thing that I have to show you guys is of course a Joyco hair product because I feel like we use one up every month. This is the Moisture Recovery Moisturizing Conditioner. So this line, if you haven't heard me jab my jaws about this, um, this is my favorite line from Joyco. And it's amazing if you have like a dry, itchy scalp, I totally recommend this Moisture Recovery line. It worked wonders for me. And this was only $9.99 $9 from TJ Maxx. I think it's like 15 at Ulta. Okay, time for the book reviews. So I did finish off three physical books this month and two audiobooks. So let's talk about the physical books first. I have to start with Throne of Glass, of course. You guys know I'm going through this series right now. I'm reading through it and I'm really loving it. So I decided to read The Assassin's Blade after the third book and in between the third and the fourth. Um, I know it's kind of controversial when to read this prequel. This is the prequel to the Throne of Glass series. Um, people say either 
the author, actually Sarah J. Mass herself, says to read it first and then read everything. Um, and then some people say to read it second, read it third, whatever. I just waited because I knew it was going to be kind of boring and I wanted to keep going with the story. So yeah, I read it after Air of Fire. After Air of Fire, when she meets Rowan um and she's coming back so it's not spoiling anything okay guys um but anyways yeah when she comes back so I read that in between and I feel like that was the perfect place to read that because everything that happens in here really coincided with what happens in here so we got like some prequel stuff and even some characters that were in this book that came back in this book so it was actually really perfect and um I think that I would suggest for people to read this after air of fire as well um but i am a person that likes to save all the surprises for later like i like to be surprised by things if you don't like to be surprised definitely read this as a prequel before everything but honestly this was boring as hell <laughs> it was so boring there's like little mini stories within this book it's not just one co cohesive story it's all like s snippets of stories um and it was boring. It was so boring until the end, until the last mini story. But yeah, I had a hard time getting through this. I actually had to read half of it on audiobook because I just couldn't bring myself to sit down and read it because it was so boring to me. But I have to say, the stuff that happens in here is super important. So pay attention because it comes back up in this. So like it's worth it to read it. But I would just read it on audiobook if you don't feel like dedicating time to it so anyways that's the assassin's blade i gave it a three out of five stars just because like it was good at the end but it was very boring and just kind of took a long time to get to the point so yeah and then we have queen of shadows which this one's so good oh my god queen of shadows is the fourth book in the series so i had just read air of fire and then I read the prequel and then I read Queen of Shadows. Queen of Shadows was so good. There's like a major change up when she gets back and I love it. New characters. We follow a different storyline too in this one, which I think we were following in Air of Fire as well. But you get more storylines, you get more things revealed. The ending, the last like 100 pages of every Sarah J Mass book is always like crazy. And this one is no different, always crazy. Um, I love, me myself, I love reading about fight scenes and wars and battles and stuff. So that was really cool to me. Yeah, I loved this book. It was amazing. I was like eating it up. Once we got to like maybe 20% through or 30% through, I was just chugging this book. It was so good. I could not read it fast enough. It was so, so good. And it is like almost 700 pages. It's 640 pages. So it's pretty chunky. It took me most of the month to read, but I loved it. I finished it literally on the last day of the month and I loved it so much. So definitely worth it for Throne of Grass, Throne of Glass to read like the first two-ish books until it gets really good. I know everybody says that and it's like honestly really boring the first couple of books. To me, it was boring, but so worth it to get to Air of Fire and then everything after has been really good for me. So I definitely recommend starting it if you guys have some time to start the Throne of Glass series. And then another book that I picked up this month, I just totally randomly picked this up, not even realizing that it was a new book by Abby Jimenez, but I have heard Abby Jimenez all over TikTok and I figured I would try one of her books. So I picked this one up from Target a while ago and it was so good, you guys. It was so good. The like the two main characters in here and their like affection for each other is so cute to me. And I really, really liked just the storyline and what was going on with the male main character and like how his world was kind of getting turned upside down. I really liked their like cute, they're like neat cute. They met online and I just thought it was adorable. So this story was amazing to me. There were like a few, you know, darker themes just about like um, past trauma, but I think they did it really well. She did it really well in here. And I really liked the way that Abby Jimenez writes about love. Like, I think it's so cute. So I gave it some five stars. I loved it so much. It was really good. I just like heartfelt and sweet and really cute and a little bit heart jerking, but it was so good. So I definitely recommend reading it. I will have to go pick up her other books because apparently this is part of a series. Like you can read them by themselves, but the characters do 
kind of continue on in the series. So yeah, I'll definitely have to read more from Abby Jimenez and I totally recommend picking one up if you like romance books. And this was a good palette cleanser. Um, I think I read it before I started Queen of Shadows. So it was a good palette cleanser from Assassin's Blade. And then the last two are actually audiobooks. So I printed out for myself this little book, uh, book tracker and this is everything that I read so far this year. This is my TBR. So I have two that I read in July that are audiobooks and they were the, both the third books in the Hades and Persephone series by Scarlett St. Clair. So she has these series of books and one is from Hades' perspective and one is from Persephone's perspective. So the one from Persephone's perspective was A Touch of Malice and the one from Hades was A Game of Gods. You guys know I've been reading this for the last three months, I guess. Um, I love this storyline. I love hearing about gods and goddesses and um, about Greek mythology. It's so cool to me. But this one got really good. So the last couple of books I had rated maybe three stars because they were good, but they were like a little fluffy and there was not much going on. But these two, a lot happened. So in these two, especially in A Game of Gods with um, Hades, a lot of stuff happened. There's like plotting, there's like secret plotting going on in the background, like outside of their relationship. And it was so good to like hear about all that. And I really, really loved hearing about um, Dionysus. I kind of love him. Um, I'm kind of obsessed with his character. He's so like, I don't know. He was not my favorite in the last couple of books, but in this book, I love hearing about him. So I really loved A Game of Gods. It was awesome. Like the way that Hades speaks about Persephone in his own mind is just so captivating to me and I just want to hear it all the time. So that was A Game of Gods and then A Touch of Malice I also rated five stars. So there's other stuff going on like in Persephone's life outside of just her relationship, her romantic relationship with Hades. She's learning about her powers. She's um, you know trying to deal with her like past trauma from her mother. She's trying to deal with a loss and yeah it's there's a lot of different emotions going on for her she's really just like coming of age um and she's in her own career and all this so i think finally in the third book she's a little more mature things are happening she's learning her power and she's sticking up for herself which i love to see in the last two books she's like damsel in distress and she's finally sticking up for herself so i really liked that so i liked this one a lot better than the other books for both of them so I gave her a touch of malice five stars as well I loved it a lot and I cannot wait to end the series next month the last book is a uh, Persephone's perspective and I don't want it to end but I'll be really happy to finish it I'm sure the ending is going to be really good it might be really heart heart-wrenching I have no idea so I definitely recommend reading it if you're into like Greek mythology or if you're into shadow daddies as we call them <laughs> on book talk just like dark brooding males if you like that you would probably like this series but that's everything for my book reviews for the month for uh my empties for the month i hope you guys enjoyed i'm just gonna leave you with this you need to read something from abby jimenez next month okay that's my recommendation but anyways that's everything for today's video i hope that you guys enjoyed it let me know down below what was your favorite read from last month or what did you finally finish up that you're super proud of and i will talk to you all in the next video don't forget to like comment and subscribe down below and i'll see you later bye